How many times you've heard people, mashayikh, they say, you know, what is hers is hers, what is yours is hers. SubhanAllah, what's this? Nonsense. This is not in the Quran. This is not in the hadith. This is not in the books. Pertaining to the right of who, what belongs to who. Yes, you have a responsibility, you have a duty of care to look after your wife, but it doesn't mean that all your worth belongs to her. But it does mean what is hers belongs to her, fine. But what I'm trying to get at is these small uh, phrases that people use in order to pander to people, to make people feel better. Islam means peace. But then you ask them, brother, what's, what should we do for the state of Palestine? Brother, I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to be political. I don't want to be political. I don't want to talk about the plight of the people in, in, uh, in uh, the Uyghur people. I don't want to talk about the plight of the people of Kashmir. I don't want to talk about the plight of people in Syria. Because, no, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. And this is what we talk about, the diffusion of responsibility. There are some issues, there are some characteristics, there are some mannerisms which affects the Muslim Ummah as a whole. And it affects the Muslim Ummah from the individual level to the societal level and then on to the international and the global level. And previously I have done another khutbah on a very similar topic uh, as Ananiya, selfishness. And today I want to talk about another topic which directly links to the situation that we find currently right now in Gaza, in Palestine. And that is the topic of personal responsibility. Our personal responsibility. You see, the Islamic civilization is not only to be credited to the Khalif, the rulers, the scholars and the commanders, but also to every mother every teacher, every businessman, every donor who built that civilization. Throughout history, though only the names of the rulers and the names of the commanders and the names of the scholars are remembered, it was the effort of every Muslim who felt individually responsible that led to an Islamic golden age. Every single Muslim, every single individual had a responsibility to play. It is for this reason that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his first words as a Nabi, his first actions as a Nabi, was an invitation to assume individual responsibility. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first message he preached, you see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran, uh, he revealed to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Okay, and warn all starting with your closest relative. Warn them. Warn them of what? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to the people, O people of Quraysh, ya ma'ashar al-Quraysh, okay? O people of Quraysh, buy yourself from Allah. Meaning, attach yourself to Allah. Turn back to Allah. For I cannot avail you at all. And then he says, ya Abdul Muttalib, Ya Ibn Abdul Muttalib, O son of Abdul Muttalib, I cannot avail you against Allah. And then he says, Ya Abbas, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, his uncle, I cannot help you against Allah. And then he said, Ya, Saf, uh, ya Safiya, who was the aunt of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I cannot help you against Allah. And then he said, Ya Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, ask me whatever you like. Ask me whatever you like of my wealth and I will give it to you. But I cannot avail you against Allah. Meaning, we have a personal responsibility. He reminded them a personal responsibility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can help us but ourselves. Upon receiving the divine mandate from Allah, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered a foundational message. This call urged every individual to recognize their personal responsibility before Allah Jalla wa'ala, before their creator. It served as a reminder for humanity to transcend complacency, emphasizing that the journey towards righteousness commences with the assumption of personal responsibility. You need to ask yourself, what am I doing? 
What can I do? What should I do? And what does the Quran says about this? Allah, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Surely we will question those to whom the message was sent, but surely we will question the messengers. Even the messengers will be questioned because they had a personal responsibility. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and for every person we have imposed his fate upon his neck and we will produce for him on the day of res resurrection a record which he will encounter spread open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, اِقْرَأْ كِتَابَكْ كَفَى بِنَفْسِكْ Read your record. Sufficient is yourself against you on this day. Meaning that the Quran conveys a very distinct message. That you are not a passive observer in life's circumstances. As Muslims, we cannot just stand on the sidelines. Instead, Allah Jalla wa Ala has designated you as an engaged participant, actively involved in shaping not only your future, but the future of the whole ummah. Meaning we have a responsibility. We have a role, we have a duty, each and every single one of us. If we want the ummah to move forward, it will be a collective effort. It will not be an individual effort. It will be a collective effort. You see, there need to be responsibility in action. In 1950s, there was a horrific murder of a lady called Catherine uh, Genovese. And she was assaulted and murdered in her apartment entrance. In her apartment entrance, she was, uh, she was assaulted and then she was stabbed multiple times. And the people who lived with her in the apartment block, they all stood and they watched. And they did not do anything. And at that time, that caused a huge uproar. Why didn't anybody do anything? Why didn't anybody help? Why didn't anybody call the police? Why did everybody stood and watch? And social psychologists, Latane and Dali, they created and they popularized the concept of something called the bystander effect. The bystander effect is contributed to two factors, diffusion of responsibility and social influence. And if we look in our ummah, if we look in our ummah today, this idea of diffusion of responsibility is now more than ever. We find that this is such a common concept, diffusion of responsibility. That the meaning of diffusion of responsibility means that the onlookers, the more onlookers there are, the less personal responsibilities individual will feel to take action. And this is something we do. The more people there are, the more we say, well, somebody else will do it. That this is something, wallahi, this is something that our ummah has. This is a big problem that our ummah has. That, oh, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will take care of it. Somebody else will do it. And starting with, you know, I'm one of those persons. I always hold the people whom are preaching first to account. The imams and the ulama. They are the first people to be hold to account. And wallahi, we find this so often. That you will find an imam. You will find a sheikh. You will find a mufti. Whoever he is, the person of authority. But he will dodge the hard questions. Brother, I will not be political. I will not be political, brother. I will not talk about this. And they will pander to every waves that there are. You know, the feminist waves. Wherever the wind blows, he will go there. You know, subhanAllah. How many times you've heard people, mashayikh, they say, you know, what is hers is hers. What is yours is hers. SubhanAllah, what's this? Nonsense. This is not in the Quran. This is not in the hadith. This is not in the books. Pertaining to the right of who, what belongs to who. Yes, you have a responsibility, you have a duty of care to look after your wife. But it doesn't mean that all your wealth belongs to her. But it does mean what is hers belongs to her, fine. But what I'm trying to get at is these small uh, yani phrases that people use in order to pander to people. To make people feel better. Islam means peace. But then you ask them, brother... What's, what should we do in for the state of Palestine? Brother, I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about... I don't want to be political. I don't want to be political. 
I don't want to talk about the plight of the people in, in, uh, in uh, the Uyghur people. I don't want to talk about the plight of the people of Kashmir. I don't want to talk about the plight of people in Syria. Because no, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. And this is what we talk about, the diffusion of responsibility. But it comes down even more. You know the young man who expects his mother to clean after him. Oh, my mom will do my bed. My mom will do the laundry. This is a diffusion of responsibility. You have a responsibility, you have to do it. And you know, subhanAllah, as I was writing this, I thought about this, subhanAllah, even the simple things, you know, like, for example, move forward, brothers. We know people, they come, they sit at the back. And there's two space here, two space here. And they will sit at the back. And then people will come sit next to them and their space is at the front. And you say, brothers, move forward. They will sit in the space, they're comfortable. Somebody else will move forward. Diffusion of responsibility. I've leaned against the wall. I'm okay, I'm happy, I'm content. I'm relaxed. Why should I move forward? Why should I move forward? Why should I help others? No, no, I'm okay, I'm happy where I am right now. This diffusion of responsibility. And this is something that's plague our ummah. Somebody else will do it, brother. Somebody else will do it. So much so. So much so that when somebody takes, somebody takes uh, yani, initiative, somebody takes initiative, it seems like, oh, subhanallah, they've taken initiative. You know, once, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the broom is outside. The broom is outside and the court of the masjid. This is something that everybody uses every day. Okay? And somebody came and he took the broom and he was cleaning the masjid. And people were, oh, subhanallah, he's cleaning the masjid. Somebody said to me, is he meant to be doing that? Subhanallah, it's dirty, clean it, it's the masjid. How many, why is it? You know, this is from a community level. We see something on the floor. We walk past it, somebody else will clean it. Our young people, how is it that so many times we can walk past the same leaky fa faucet or the same broken bulb every day, assuming that somebody else will fix it? Why is it that we allow our parents to go to Tesco's and their stores without actively insisting on our presence and contributing to financially? Oh, mom and dad is doing the weekly shopping. It's okay, I will stay at home in my room. Play on the PlayStation. I have work to do. You know, this, this is the problem. This is an issue. This diffusion of responsibility. What's happening is we're getting spoiled boys marrying girls. And mom did everything for her Beta, mom did everything for him. Mom did everything. So he expects the wife to do the same. And then there's big issues. I'm not your servant. <coughs> she has a career. You have a career. Big issues. Diffusion of responsibility. <coughs> Lack of choosing to do responsibility. And it's the same for our sisters. <laughs> In dad's home, she would wake up at midday and spend the rest of the day watching makeup tutorial. So when she's married, she does the same thing. And then there's issue. There's problem in the marriage. You know, people talk. Say, Imam... Talk about manhood, talk about rajuliya, talk about masculinity. Wallahi, the first step towards masculinity and rajuliya is responsibility. Learning how to take responsibility about yourself. You're talking about Netflix and Disney, effeminizing your sons. Wallahi, you did that when you decided to mollycoddle your children and give them everything on a platter. You did that when you decided to mollycoddle your son and, do, uh, and give them everything on a platter. We have a responsibility, each and every single one of us, to improve, number one, ourselves. Number two, our household. And number three, our community. Wallahi, this is incumbent on every single one of us. The responsibility is incumbent upon every single one of us. Otherwise, we are guilty of this idea of, well, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. Yeah, it's okay. Somebody else will do it. And yes, inshallah, you know, be the light, Allah, somebody else will do it. But we will not improve as an ummah. We will not move forward as an ummah. We will stay as we are. And that era of golden age, that era of greatness, that area of amazing discoveries, the area of izza and honor, that will not come back. Brothers, if I can kindly request all the brothers to please stand up, inshallah, uh, move forward, fill in all the gaps in front of you and to the side of you. Jazakullah khairan. And if I can request everybody to please stand up. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Move forward. Take over the space. The khutbah will start um, when I finish, inshallah. I've got like five more minutes.
So, as I mentioned, each and every single one of us, we have a personal responsibility. We have a duty of care. We have a duty of care, number one, to ourselves. Number two, to our family. And number three, to our community. If we fail this, then as an ummah, we will not move forward. As an ummah, we will not progress. And you know, subhanAllah, when we think about it, how much do we lack as individuals to know about our deed? to learn about our deen, to practice our deen. And then, how, what is the hal of our family? Where is the help? What do we do at home? How do we benefit those who are around us? And finally, how do we benefit our community? How do we help our community? <coughs> this is very important. Three things which we need to establish. And number one, it starts with personal responsibility. It starts with <coughs> what do we do as individuals? How do we act as individuals? When we see, you know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that the lowest level of iman, the lowest level of iman is when you see something on the road, you remove it. When you see something on the road, you, you remove it. This is the lowest part, part of iman. But, you know, subhanallah, and I and always say this, you know, why is it? We have such teachings in our deen. We have such importance and such powerful teachings in our deen. Yet, the areas where the Muslim live, that's the worst areas. That's the filthiest areas. That's the area with the most, uh, yani, that's the area where people litter the most. That's the area where people fly tip the most. Why is this? It comes back to this, personal responsibility. We do not have this personal responsibility. We do not have this idea of, well, I need to do this. We say, oh, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will take care of it. And it is the same thing that today you're finding in the, the, uh, in the international community, somebody else will take care of the Palestinian people. Somebody else will go there. Somebody else will take support them. We have a duty of care, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We have a responsibility of care. And as I mentioned earlier, that the journey towards righteousness, the journey towards goodness, the journey towards excellence, it starts with personal responsibility. The journey towards excellence starts with personal responsibility. And this is very important. This is one of the most important things. If we want to be good, if we want to be attain goodness, if we want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah jalla wa ala pleased with us and, ple and we are pleased with him. The way that we need to do this is through personal responsibility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be able to put into practice what we hear. You know, uh, and I will end with this. So much has been said about what separates men and animals. What separates animals from humans. What separates the, you know, the beast from man. And yet it's very simple. What takes man, what takes one status from the status of animal to the rank of the angels or even higher is responsibility. And subhanAllah, nowadays, responsibility is gone. We do not have this idea of responsibility. No one's responsible anymore. Everybody expects things to be done to them. And this has, wallahi, this starts from the house. It starts from the home. Molly coddling our children, doing everything, giving them everything in a platter, and then overnight expecting them to be responsible adults. It doesn't happen that way. So, we first of all give ourselves and make ourselves responsible. Then we do it to our uh, children. In our household and then to our community. وَأَقُولُ مَا سَمِعْتُ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَيْكَتَهُ يُصَلُونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا صَلُوا عَلَيْهُ وَس